Hey, everybody, how you doing? It's another Saturday night. It is 10 o'clock, wherever it is that you're at. Or if it's central, I guess it's 8 o'clock. Look, I, don't make me do math. I hate that. You know what my math in college was called? Math. Yeah, I can't do it. So uh, uh, we got a great show for you guys tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got a lot of fun people in the studio tonight, and uh, they're they they're wonderful. They're very nice. They're, they're they're pretty much all white. So everybody be everybody try to be cool. All right, at home. All right. Uh, <laughs> I always forget to I always forget to say this, so I actually wrote it down this time. Everybody, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Pe most people have heard we are going to network, but we still need like for people, for y you folks to like and subscribe because I'm going to keep this part going too so I can keep my money going. You know what I'm saying? I ain't ready to give up that Skrilla. Um, so when we come back, we are going to have uh, the segment where I talk about stuff. I say talk about stuff because I decided I didn't like thoughts from the middle. I have no idea what the name of this is. Next segment is going to be called, but it will be good. I promise you, you'll laugh. Uh, and then we'll be back and we'll have a special guest and I will tell you all about that then. So, anywho, go to the bathroom, get yourself something to eat, then get your butts back here. We're going to commercial and we'll be back with the B.D. Freeman Show. Here we go. <laughs> shark move. A lot of people don't know that. Everyone will be doing it next year, though. Don't worry about it. Uh, uh, everything that I do, I think you guys are, are learning this now as we have moved on to the new and improved B.D. Freeman show. We do not work with uh, teleprompters or cue cards or anything like that here. Actually, everything that I think of to do all comes out of here. This is my journal, my daily journal. I have about a bazillion of them. I write down what happens to me during the week, and that's what my week is, because if you want to know what happened from all the other late night shows or the news or everything, you're going to get the same story. But with me, eh, who knows, you know? You're definitely not going to get the same story as you're going to get from the rest of them. And don't hear me saying anything bad. I don't want, like, Kimmel and everybody else being angry at me. I'm not saying anything mean to you guys. I'm just saying that you suck and I'm black and better. So, here we go. <laughs> Since tonight we, uh, we're a little bit ahead of time and we have uh, three or four minutes of extra time, I thought I'd explain the physics of the universe as well as our political system in its entirety. It's very simple. Uh, now, in order to properly explain these things, we have to go back Way, way back, way, way back to the time of Isaac Newton. Newton. Isaac Newton. Now, the year was 1972. A guy named Newt, okay, was almost bludgeoned to death by an apple tree. Uh, uh, you have to understand that back in those days, there were no pesticides, so the apples grew as larger than bowling balls. Or <laughs> 20, 40 pounds apiece is very... He almost had to change his name from Isaac Newton to Fig Newton because it just wouldn't have been nothing but mush between 
two vanilla pieces uh, right there. Now, he was very angry about it, as most people would know. He was very, very angry. So he decided that uh, he was going to get up the next day, grab his axe, and he would chop that tree down. But the tree was hip and knew what Isaac was up to, and he bailed before Isaac ever got back up to the tree. But there was a police sketch that's out there. So if you ever see, uh, here's the police sketch. If you, if, you, if you ever happen to come across this fella here, listen, don't, don't go up to him and try to apprehend him alone, okay? Uh, he is armed, branched, and dangerous. So please, please uh, keep that in your mind. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll roll this back on up. Uh, no, let's go to the next. I, I promised you the whole thing. Uh, you don't know this, but you're actually learning. I'm sort of like Mr. Miyagi here with the, uh, you don't know why you're washing my car. You just know that you're white. Uh, so the, now that tree is, uh, that tree is still at large, like I was saying, you know, and, and uh, so don't try to, don't try to take him. Don't try to take him all alone. Um, uh, but that was a great, car isn't that a great, isn't this like a, a really great cartoon? piece, isn't it? Great, the, the, the police drawing, isn't that wonderful? It's a wonderful cartoony piece of a very dangerous, murderous apple tree. She got to, uh, I, I like it a lot. Um, and uh, which actually brings me to my next point, which is cartoons. How do cartoons fit into the whole universe, physics, and our political system? Well, I'm about to tell you how. You have to understand, the best cartoons are the cartoons that have superheroes in them. Uh, and speaking of superheroes, you have to speak of supervillains. Now, before there was Superman, there was just the average criminal, okay, that the police couldn't catch back then. Or now. <laughs> and, but after Superman, you had Lex Luthor. Bat after Batman, you have the Joker. You see, the way the universe works, and what old Newt found out was that there cannot be one without the other. There is no forward without backwards, no up without down, no left without right. The universe will correct whatever it is that is made one. There'll never be one, there will always be two. You, right there, there's some other guy who looks just like you, who is with a man right now in a hotel room down the street. I actually saw it, it freaked me out. I thought you were the same guy. But you're here, so you know, I'm just saying, I'm not saying anything about you, per se. Uh, I mean, even after Aquaman, there were, Aquaman, there were uh, goldfish, I guess? Uh, uh, a clam, possibly, I think, there was something like that. So you see everything, there's always must be two sides, right? Now, okay, what does this have to do with politics? We created and elected a Superman. We created and we elected a Superman in President Barack Obama. That's right. But as we've learned from this little session, when there is a Superman created, a superhero, there then must be a supervillain. So after Obama, the universe created a rump. I say rump and don't use the T because if I do, they will cancel my show. <laughs> so I have to say rump, but let's all know what it is that I'm talking about. And besides, he has an amazing rump. You gotta admit, <laughs> you gotta admit. Uh, uh, okay, so, that, so, we, so the, we, we, got, we got a super villain. We got a super villain. So what I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to get through you about the whole process of physics, of history, of science, and of the world is that when you go to vote and you're standing there in that booth, for God's sake, just go for the middle. Just go for the middle, okay? Don't try to get a Superman because we're going to get another supervillain. Just find out who's just regular, you know, the most regular person, the guy that's going to screw us over the least, and just pick that person, okay? <laughs> because we cannot have another supervillain. So don't make another superhero. I know that sounds terrible, but that's what I think. I'm B.E. Freeman. Thanks for listening to me. <laughs>
Like I said, I have to say like and subscribe, so I wrote it down, so I'll keep saying, like and subscribe. Are you guys going to a network? Yes, it seems that we are. But like and subscribe! Because our show, and I, and I mean this from the heart, our show, we really want to get through to you. We really want to get through to you and get all the money from you that we possibly can. <laughs> so, we're gonna go to commercial, and when we come back, we are gonna be sitting down with an actor who I am absolutely, totally blown away by. We'll talk about that when we come back. It's the Beanie Freeman Show. Go to the bathroom, get some popcorn, and then come on back. Johnny Carson! Just in case you didn't catch that, those were my, the only ballet moves I know. Why are you doing ballet moves, B.D. Freeman? Well, I'll tell you why, and don't talk to me in that tone of voice again. Uh, we're sitting here with somebody who, I went to see her film last night, and uh, anytime you go see someone's film for a show like this, you, you hope it's gonna be good. And usually it's okay, or a lot of times it's not, but sometimes, you come across something that is just a gem. It, 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 it touches you in several different places, enough to feel uncomfortable, enough to make you think about things in your own life or to rejudge other things. Uh, it, it, it put me in a strange mood that I find myself still in today after watching it. It's one of those films that sticks with you. Um, uh, I want to introduce her now. This is Sarah. Nevada Grether, ladies and gentlemen. Now the film, the film is called Grand Jeté. Now what does that mean? Grand Jeté, um, it, it's, a, it's a part of the ballet syllabus. It's called, it means big leap in mm -hmm. French. But it is like the dance step when the ballerinas jump into the air and do the splits in the air. Is it, are they looking at us when they do the splits, or is it the one where they're kind of going somewhere, looking to, at where they're going? I think they're or does just, it, matter? it depends on the choreography. Ah, yeah. gotcha. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a hard move to do, and you need a lot of power. Mm -hmm. So it's um, a metaphor for the movie, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell me how this ties in to the film. Now, when I was watching it, uh, I remember I was I, I had gotten something to drink, and at the end of it, I realized I hadn't drank any of the drink I got because I was <laughs> so I was so pulled into the movie, mm -hmm. and I have no idea why I needed that bottle of Jack Daniels, but I did. <laughs> but I got so pulled into the film that I, I I ended up not having my movie drink and just sitting there and watching it and and trying so hard uh, to watch it with an open eye and an open heart mm. and and mm. not to not to 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 try to judge it right. or try to judge what it is that I see and your director Isabel Staver she she was wonderful because she would keep the camera going right. and it just went and you had to stay there in America there's a smash cut to the next thing with your film you are there, and uh, let me give you just, I know I'm talking a lot no, here, but good. let me give you just one compliment. I, uh, I, I, I honestly feel like you are probably one of the top five actors working right now from watching your film. It was, it was, it was so difficult for me to watch it because it was like, if I was there, I'd run over and help but I mm, couldn't run mm, over and help. Mm. But it actually fired off that thing in the brain that says, you gotta go help. And I had to just sit there helpless, and you had to sit there helpless. And I wanna know, how did you how did you get there? How did you construct this character? I mean, I wouldn't say I constructed it, but I definitely know what you mean, because Nadia requires a lot of compassion to watch. She's a person that 
is just so in her fairy tale world in a sense, but totally destroyed by it. You can tell from the beginning scenes and up until basically when she meets her son and you know things maybe transform because she's jumping in like Jete, what that means jumping, jumping, taking a big leap into her childhood where she left it and. Um, yeah, how did I do that? Well, I come from that world. I come. I was a ballerina for many years. I wanted to get into acting. So when I, you say when you say many years, oh, many years. I mean, I still work as a dancer. Okay. You, you can't really. Um, I, I work more as a choreographer now, but I. Mm. Um, I mean, I left home when I was sixteen, and that's uh, what I did. I left Ventura County when I was sixteen we, years God, old. We had that in common. I left when I was sixteen for dance too, but <laughs> did you? Chippendales kicked me out pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have kicked you out. Oh well, thank you. You're very, <laughs> you're very kind on camera. No. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> but let's get back to your movie. I, I, I really am interested in how did you stay in those mm. really sticky moments? Um, I have, I, I had a really good relationship. I do have a really good relationship with the director, and she worked with us in a, in a way that. She didn't, she forbid us to read the script more than once. It was awkward. I mean, it was in a foreign language. It's in German. I'm an, I'm an American. I spoke in German. I played a German. And she did a lot of improvisation with us. So we didn't have to do any of the, you know, harder scenes, like sexual scenes. Um, we didn't have to practice them. So we just got closer and closer as friends. My uh, co-star, Emil von Schoenfeld, amazing actor, young actor, very young. Very, very young. courageous, yes, incredible very courageous. actor. Very courageous. Oh my gosh! And um, yeah, we became friends. We became friends. Um, I'm not his mother in real life, so uh, I, of you know, course. <laughs> helped of a course. lot, you know, <laughs> say like that. And um, yeah, we we got to a level where we could connect, and it didn't matter what the lines were. It didn't. It didn't really matter that we were making intimate scenes because we had a lot of trust and she built up that trust by working in a way that I've never worked before as an actor and I can only recommend it to to keep the things very authentic and crisp it's better to find that space within yourself and then you it's kind of a movie I'm acting right you know and yeah, yeah. yeah. see I, I understand that I'm a, I, I, I know it's like the cool thing to say, but yeah, I, but the, but I I actually am a method actor, so mm -hmm. because that's just the only way I know how to how to get close into a character. Because I can find if I can't find the door, I can find a window. If I can't find the window, I find the chimney. If I can't find the chimney, I find a basement. When you know, I'll get in, I'll get in there. I just need a way, you yeah. know. And uh, and you can always find a way inside yourself. And I felt like I I was looking at that with you that every scene seemed to be it's almost like and, and this is nothing about the cast who I loved I loved everyone in mm, the cast mm. but it almost could have been a one person show because you were you just carried it every moment of it you just carried it and it felt by the end of it I felt tired I'm just <laughs> sitting there watching it and I was like whoo lord I need some sleep you know, because it was like, oh, what I have just been through. I, I couldn't, uh, I, I found I couldn't uh, uh, go home and call any friends and talk to them about it. Oh, well, we had some really interesting Q&As after the release in Germany um, where people were just shocked, asking the director, do you have any ethics? You know, because it is a story about incest. It's, it, and it's not a story to say that you, you have to find compassion for this character because she's so healable you know she's at a point in her life where she's ready to be healed from major drama and trauma that she experienced and left home and didn't have a childhood you can tell and she wants to understand who this person is and the circumstance of becoming a ballerina I feel gives gives only way to understand your life in this sort of fantasy space and she, she doesn't really comprehend until it gets too late yeah. what's really going on and you have to like Nadia because she's really innocent in a way and you're like I don't know if I like her but how can I like this it's not that I like it I just I don't want to judge her and the director does an amazing job trying to express a story that could happen mm -hmm. doesn't matter uh, your education doesn't matter your sexuality doesn't matter your race it's like she's really transforming a, a circumstance that 
humans just cannot find ethical, which is not ethical. It's absolutely not. Right. But right. there's a way out. You know, like we all make mistakes. I mean, it's really a difficult story. But I, I, I really was, um, that's what kept, really kept me in it is that everyone was so human that, mm. that and I, in American films, there, all, there always feels like there's a clock. And then around the middle of the clock is when the character's arc Redempt, redemptive arc begins, right. but there was none of this. This yeah. was just day to day to day to day, and well, you found it well. You saw that, and that's really important. That's part of it. Well, I'm glad I did because I was oh. I, I was trying to be as there and as present as I possibly could be, mm. and it was uh, it was difficult. Mm. It was it was a difficult film to watch, but watching you work those ins and outs of just such a, 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 a rare, I, I hope, a rare uh, a thing that would happen in a family. Um, mm. I didn't, I, I just sat there thinking, how did she do that? How did she do that? I have a big wish because I came from this ballet world and I had an eating disorder for many years and I left it and I pioneered into Berlin to do my acting thing and um, didn't go back to America because I got the opportunity to do extra work for really bad <laughs> whatever I'm not going to say but I understood how the, the work is here in the US and I, and I was already all over the world, I was 19 so I had already been main roles, I had already done so much and I said okay I want to go into art, into art film because and it's not exclusive like I do I do I do my Jack Chan thing you know my Bruce Lee thing if I could but I, I definitely was like I need to tell a story and in art films European film they don't really want to do the Hollywood thing it's a little bit like they take their space to tell stories to right. tell real stories yeah they have a they have a completely you know? different lane yeah, and it's and it's important. It's impressive that you know we can also learn things from cinema. We don't mm. just need to be entertained. You know? how, how did you, how did you affect the fact that your character had this terrible eczema? Um, well, it was a lot of work every morning at the <laughs> getting makeup on. But um, eczema is something you get when you're stressed. And she was just on. I mean, she is just not free. And you see that right from the beginning. Um, I don't think she even breathes. I think she dances. Perhaps she breathes when she dances, you know, but she's, she's so awkward. And, you know, I know what it's like. I have a lot of friends that w stayed in that world, and they're not okay. So I think it's an important statement to talk about this ballerina thing everybody thinks it's amazing it's amazing it is amazing to dance like that I I don't want to speak poorly about that I love dancing I loved ballet but it's set up still in such a hierarchical system that just doesn't exist anymore and it doesn't it really is like that still and there are these young girls dealing with this pressure at such a young age and puberty and all that and then that's what you learn that's what you know and that's what makes you the best if you kill it in that time and if you don't, you're not going to make it. So Nadia is just like, she did her job. She did it and made it. And now she's dealing with the aftermath of not having a childhood and trying to reverse it in some way because she has this son that she doesn't know. And so, I mean, you can look at it how you want, but for me, this is a story about healing, even though it's like not the right way to heal. But, you know, some people go to jail, they they change too, you know? I don't want to be the one that passed judgment, especially as an actor, you know, you want to embrace people for who they are, and that's the great, the great, um, uh, let's say, um, beauty of the work and the craft itself, mm -hmm. to have compassion, constant compassion, compassion, compassion. And I saw that, I saw that in the, in the work was, and it, and seeing the compassion in the work made me want to be more compassionate mm. it may it, it forced it out of me mm. the way that you know a comedian for, can force a laugh out of a out of an audience that's not laughing and forces it right you know i felt like I, i've never had that experience with myself during uh any 
of my movies, television, or plays. Not, not that I knew of. Mm -hmm. But uh, watching something, I never had that happen. That felt that I was feeling while I'm feeling this compassion for this person. And I'll tell you where I especially felt it. It was in the, uh, when the son takes his mother to the club. Oh, yeah. And then, and she does, you can tell she doesn't, everybody, the kids are there and they're dancing. And she Super doesn't really know, out of like, place. how to do that. But she lets go anyway. Mm -hmm. She let go. Mm -hmm. And then she just moved however it was that she was going to move. And I felt so much compassion in that moment for this person because I thought, oh, my gosh, how little... Right. There is of this person that's that's there. There's it, it's it's so small, mm -hmm. and she has so much to fill up. Mm -hmm. You know that vulnerable. That yeah vulnerable. yeah it was it was a very vulnerable mm -hmm. scene to me. It mm -hmm. made me feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna stop for just a second. We're going to go to a commercial real quick, and uh, then we'll be back with uh, Sarah Nevada Grether. The movie is a Grand Jeté. And you really got to see it. We'll be back in just a second. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> call, call your mom or dad. Say hello. can't say enough about Sarah um, it's you you're you're a, a real a, you're the real deal you know you're 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 the you're the real article but I, I want to I, I wanted to we only have a few minutes left and I thought I could okay I could talk to you about two things one I could talk to you about ballet uh, growing up and be in that system but I but I, I think I, that what I'd like to do is I'd like, if you would, to come back to the show again and let's talk about that. that would, you, would you come back and see I us again? I would come back, of Okay, great. Then that, yeah, all right. Yeah. Everybody in the audience clap except for this person dressed as a Jedi Knight. There's no one else. <laughs> no one else. Uh, <laughs> I saw you. Uh, <laughs> Um, I want to talk to you about a film that you did. I don't know if it's an older film or a younger film. I know that I was just moved by it. Now, I'm going to try to say it uh, because it's, it's German, uh, and I don't, I'm, I don't know my German. But, so, but I believe it's, it, the pronunciation is Die Valorien. Die Valorien. Yes. Yeah. And the English yeah. term for it is the lost. The lost. Now, I, can, you can you talk us through that? I thought that that was a piece of fascinating work. Fascinating. And I watched it a, a, a few times uh, because I just said, this is, this is something else. This is something else here. Yeah. And I wanted to get into it, but it was like, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was just a little bit out of my reach. And I wanted to talk to you about that and, and ask you where that came from and how you got there. How you, how you got that how you, how you got into that role and got that character out of it it's a really interesting question that you asked me because that movie it was a three-year project from an amazing film artist called, uh, named Reynolds Reynolds he's American and he was in Berlin doing his f art film and he basically uh, found footage from the 30s um, that he wanted to finish a film that was about Christopher Isherwood. And, he, and who was that? Christopher Isherwood is a writer from, correct me if I'm wrong, from England, uh, 30s. Okay. Um, lived in Berlin a long time and was fully into the cabaret scene and he just had a lot of inspiration there. Mm -hmm. So it was a vampire movie that he found footage of and it was destroyed and never finished because of the war. And he wanted to finish the film. So I got called onto that as a dancer because I was like really new in Berlin at the time. I was very young. Um, and they asked me to do performance art for that cabaret, dancing, singing, whatever. And I did it. I did an act. It's amazing, amazing work. And then he liked me so much, which is amazing. Um, 
compliment that he wrote in this role and actually s continued the story with me as an actor. And I became one of the main protagonists in the movie. Um, the story goes on about a Nazi soldier who uh, gets fed up because he's in love with me and I don't want to have anything to do with him anymore because they're changing all the, you know, the, 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 the Americans need to leave. And so she's an American in Germany at the time and she's getting separated and he's this Nazi soldier and he gets really angry at her and she doesn't want to have anything to do with him anymore. And so he goes and like murders one of the other girls at the cabaret um, who's the innocent girl. And then she gets, yeah, then then the vampire comes and then, then she gets taken out of the, um, taken out of the grave and then I give my body and I'm a sorcerer all of a sudden and then I'm like it's an amazing movie but it's an art movie it was shown at MoMA like in the 11 screens I think so that you could sort of understand what is the new footage what is the old footage but yeah Lily that was an amazing role I know to, to, to try to to try to sit and explain it is so difficult but if if if, if people would see it they go oh 16 millimeter Really oh. old, really great. Yeah, um, I was wondering if, that, if if that's what you use, if yeah. you're using the 16 millimeter, because it looked like that. It, but now it, with so much technology, if I figured maybe they could just make it look like that. You cannot but that, it really that. was the, you the cannot, real deal. Yeah, it's the real deal. Oh. And yeah, I hope it's being sh shown in many. I know it was in it was in Brazil last time I heard. I mean, he's a. I know his wife is in. Denmark, no, in Holland. Sorry, yeah. I have to I have to catch up on on that one. <laughs> how did you how did you get into that character because the character was being uh, and maybe maybe this is a dumb question because as a ballerina you're constantly being manipulated into movements that the body really isn't supposed to make. Mm -hmm. uh, but how did you allow it to happen by someone else, someone coming to you and putting you here and moving you there as in, as if you were a doll? Are you talking about this, the clips that you yes. saw? Oh, it was easy. I mean, it's like you do the robot, right? You know, like, you just, yeah. I mean, it I like how bad you make me feel yeah, about I'm sorry. that. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> how did you do that? I, as an actor, I'd like to know. I did the robot, fool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, that just made me feel so terrible I right did the robot. I had my point shoes on. You can check that clip out. It's fun. Uh -huh. The point shoes. And then he, yeah. Very, very interesting work. I wouldn't have got the vampire part or anything in it from what you I saw. You haven't seen the but whole what thing. I, I'll no, send I didn't. It to I didn't get. I'll I didn't get a chance to see the. But, but the, but the piece mm. stands alone. Right. It stood alone. I mean, you can see like if you see something that I've done, you go, oh, I wonder what's happening in all this movie, you know. But your piece. It just stood alone. It could have. Well, it, it could have. Go, it could have gone out as a short and would have won everything. Dang it. No, so the, the thing is, is that that was a performance for the spectators of the film. So that was like a finished performance. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably why you see it, because it was on stage with the partner. Uh, and yeah, that's why. Because it was like, you know, if you go to the opera, you watch the opera. And it was about, the, in the film, they were going to see the cabaret. So they were watching me perform mm -hmm. in the film. So you had, and this is when you had just gotten to Berlin. This is, yeah, this were my early years in Berlin. So you had, Right so after you, dancing in Stuttgart Ballet, I was in the ballet, big ballet company, traveled the world, it was, yeah. And then you get to Berlin, and let me tell you something, and I'm not just saying this because talk show host is supposed to say this stuff, but honestly, you don't age. Like, I, like all this stuff that I saw of you, I saw you as a doctor, I saw you as a mother, I saw you as kind of a, a tough, I saw you as a lonely, as each one, and every single one of them was like, damn. Like, <laughs> looking at the years, I'm thinking, maybe that vampire stuff, I don't know, maybe there's something, maybe, maybe there's something to that. Ballerinas. Hey, hey, just don't, just, just to me. Ballerinas, who, who, I'll tell who, you a secret. Who, who bit you? I'll tell you Who bit you? Wasn't it you? No, was, I'm <laughs> was it Lestat? Did Lestat get you? You got me, maybe. You guys no, did no. not read interview with the vampire that should have been no, a really that should have been a really great joke that received absolutely no credit at it's all a book. read a book america a book, right? no tell me tell me please. um i think ballerinas are very uh, yeah we look really young good thing 
Mm -hmm. But inside, you know, with all that work, it's it's not easy. You know, you can you 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 know. They took my X-ray of my ankles when I was 24, and they said, "How much you make? Do you make like a soccer player?" No. Stop. You know, because they were like your ankles. Your your toes. Like the, they I, look I, like 65 years old. I, I mean, like you're that. Like, I like that. Old. If you had the money, they would have been like, "Keep going. Just go on and do <laughs> okay, it." That's if what you had saying. the money, they would be like, "Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> matter at all." You know, both your feet gonna fall off by uh, <laughs> this new next New Year's Eve, but. What the hell do you care? You a millionaire. You're a millionaire. You, know? you don't need those legs. <laughs> you know, Who needs I legs? Mean, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. What kind of doctors are these people? What kind of doctors are you going to? My feet hurt. How rich are you? Not too rich. <laughs> well, so you better stop doing what the hell you doing. You know, I mean, so true. It's like so I don't. Y'all you, well, I mean, some mean ass doctors in Germany. <laughs> Germany? Why you like that? Be cool, Germany. Be cool. I love you. That's so funny. <laughs> Well, listen, you have been a joy to have here, and uh, we've never had a guest like you, and um, we want to do a lot more of these, so you are our initial guest into the uh, the independent film lane, and I love it. I love the film. I love everything I saw of you, and I really believe that you have an incredible acting career ahead of you, and thank you for coming to the show. Thank you. And you'll come back, right? Yeah. All right. All right, everybody. Did you like the show? Did you like the show? Yes. Yes. I love it. Just, I, I created a character called Kurt Nuggler. Nothing. <laughs> I think it's like the fifth time I've tried that as a on this show, and I never get. <laughs> just look at me like, and it's like, is it? Come on, Kurt Nuggler is a funny name. It is. It is, it is. That wasn't the joke that I made. I'm not telling everybody that joke because I want to do it on Netflix. But listen, Sarah, you've been wonderful. Please go out and see. Le no, uh, 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 look at me. I can't remember my German. Grand jeté. Grand jeté. It's French. Go out and see, go go find it. Go find it. No matter what you got to do. No October 25th, it's coming out on VOD. Oh, do it one more time. October 25th, it's coming out on VOD with Altered Innocence. Great niche distributor. I'm a big fan of all his work. Right Frank on. Jaffe, he has a great uh, distribution company uh, based in Los Angeles. It's called Altered Innocence, and it's coming out on VOD on October 25th. Oh, I wish I could be over there because I'm altered, but definitely not innocent. That's right. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, so I can't wait till you come back again already. I, I'm already ready for you to, I, we should just keep doing this show. Just we, should just, we should just stay here <laughs> for stay a here week forever. and let's just like really, <laughs> really like do some Beatles stuff and That's just really I get mean. into it for like a week. I'm a rock but, star <laughs> you know, but, but, um, just uh, continue success in everything and, and, and you're quite wonderful. So please everybody just reach out and see that movie, see that film, see that film. And thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So much. I am B.D. Freeman. This has been my show, The B.D. Freeman Show. Uh, oh, wait. I want you to tell. How do people get a hold of you if they want to uh, reach out to you and say, oh, I love your movies. It's so um, good. Like, how do they Sarah reach out Nevada to you? Sarah Nevada Grether, Instagram, or whatever. I yeah, on Instagram? I'm, I'm on Instagram. Are I'm you not, on Facebook? I haven't that? gotten to that point where I want to unleash that Instagram thing. I will. Damn, I'll you use the word thing. unleash. Like, if you put your thing on Instagram, I, if I did, like, the I, world is uh, going to be like, ah, I she just, broke the internet. <laughs> she broke it. How did well, she break it? She unleashed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I will be unleashing myself more on the Instagram. So right I, now, people can get all like, of you on Instagram. I'm an artist. Okay, you know? well, we're gonna, like, well, we're going to have your, 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 your handles up there. So you'll probably be getting a lot of people writing you. And I a lot of them that. will be weirdos because they watch this show. <laughs> <laughs> so, all Please right, everybody. I love you. <laughs> uh, remember to have a great tomorrow. And also, you are not in an interracial relationship unless you are dating a horse or a chicken. Good night, everybody. <laughs> love you. Yeah.